Hey everyone, Mr. McHugh here, bringing you one of my favorite all-time lessons in trigonometry. It has to do with the, the essential question we've already talked about a little bit. What are the relationships between right triangle and circular definitions of the trig functions? And this in particular has to do with the circle definitions, and you'll see the circle in play in this video. So here's the circle. This is the unit circle. Unit meaning that the radius of this circle centered at the origin is 1. So if the, if the radius is 1, um, then all of these points around the perimeter of the circle have a distance from the origin of 1. We'll get to their coordinates in just a second, but one of the things that we want to do with the unit circle is convert all degree measurements to their radian counterparts. So starting with 0 degrees, which is clearly 0 radians, 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. And if you need to do the conversions from the earlier video, you can do the conversions, but 30 degrees is pi over 6. 45 degrees, pi over 4, degree, uh, pi over 4 radians. 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. And lastly, 90 degrees is pi over 2, and that completes this first quadrant. Now, one of the things to point out here is, since the angle measurement's in degrees, we can create a pattern, for instance, the 30 degree pattern. If we, if we count by 30 degrees, starting with 0, then 30 degrees, and 60 degrees, and 90 degrees, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, and 360. Finally, the pattern in counting by 30 degrees is the same exact uh, pattern that we would create if we count instead of 30 degrees by pi over 6 radians. So, if we count by pi over 6 radians, we'll have, starting with 0, pi over 6, then we'll have 2 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 3. We'll have 3 pi over 6, which reduces to pi over 2. We'll have 4 pi over 6, which, re which reduces to 2 pi over 3. We'll have 5 pi over 6, which doesn't reduce at all. And then we'll have 6 pi over 6, which of course reduces to pi. The pattern continues 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6, which reduces to 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6, which reduces 3 pi over 2. 10 pi over 6, 5 pi over 3. 11 pi over 6 is unreducible, and then finally 12 pi over 6, which is 2 pi, and we've completed one full rotation. So the pattern of counting by 30s or the pattern of counting by pi over 6 radians is the same, uh, same situation. Uh, similarly, if we think about the pattern of counting by 45 degrees, starting with 0, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, back to 360. You can see that that gets us the 45 degree angle multiples that we missed by counting by 30 degrees. And again, if we count by pi over 4 radians at each of these multiples, we'll be able to fill in the other angle conversions quickly and easily around the unit circle. So starting at 0, uh, degrees is 0 radians. 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians, as we said. Then we'll have 2 pi over 4 radians, which reduces to pi over 2 here. We'll have 3 pi over 4 radians, which is the conversion of 135 degrees. And then finally, 4 pi over 4 radians gets us pi again at 180 degrees. Then we've got 5 pi over 4 radians at 225 degrees. 6 pi over 4 radians is already here and reduces to 3 pi over 2 like we've seen before. And then we've got 7 pi over 4 radians 
is a conversion at 315 degrees, and then 8 pi over 4 radians gets us our 2 pi again. And now we've converted every angle around the unit circle to their radian counterparts. Back to the idea of being a unit circle, if the radius is truly one around this unit circle at the quadrantal angles, which are the angles at each of the um, on the axes, the x and y axes that separate the quadrants from one another, the coordinates should be fairly easy to determine, such as at the angle measurement of zero in standard position, the point there has an x coordinate of one and a y coordinate of zero. If the circle is a circle of radius one at this location, that's the coordinate pair that fits an angle of zero degrees. At 90 degrees or at pi over two radians, we're now on the positive y-axis. On the y-axis, our x-coordinate is 0, and our y-coordinate is a positive 1. Continuing to go around to the quadrantal angles, 180 degrees or pi radians. Now we've got a negative x-coordinate and a y-coordinate of 0. And lastly, down in the negative, uh, negative y, on the negative y-axis, our x-coordinate is once again 0 but now our y-coordinate is negative 1, and those coordinate pairs are the easiest to figure out around the unit circle. The trickier ones are the ones in between. In order to do that, what we're going to do, and you'll notice the angle measurements, at least in the first quadrant, you'll recognize the 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees are all our special angle measurements that we've seen in special right triangles before in geometry and earlier in this course. So what we can do is construct ourselves temporarily a right triangle inside the unit circle. And we'll start with, with this point at 30 degrees. If we construct a right triangle here, you can see by doing this, we've created a right triangle with this angle here with uh, in standard position. This is our 30 degree or our pi over 6 radian. Uh, angle. Now we know certain side lengths go with a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. This radius is 1 for our unit circle and therefore the hypotenuse is 1. If the hypotenuse in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle is 1, then we know that the adjacent side to the 30 degree angle, 30 degrees, I'm trying to fit that in there, the adjacent side here, which is the x-coordinate of the point is the square root of 3 over 2, square root of 3 over 2 times the hypotenuse, which in this case is 1, which makes the multiplication easy, and that's why we use the unit circle. So the x-coordinate is root 3 over 2. The y-coordinate, which is the opposite side of the 30-degree angle, is half of the hypotenuse. So in our case, in the unit circle, half the hypotenuse is one half. And we just calculated or just really derived the coordinate pairs for the point around the unit circle at 30 degrees using a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Now if we try the same trick with the point that's labeled 45 degrees or pi over 4, we create our right triangle here. Now we'll be working with an angle in standard position that is a 45 degree angle. There we go. This is a 45 degree angle, which is why it's labeled on the unit circle as the, the point at 45 degrees. Well, again, our hypotenuse is 1 because we're working with the unit circle. And we know that the relationship of the legs of a 45 degree, 45, 45, 90 right triangle, which are the same, this is an isosceles right triangle, are the square root of 2 over 2 times the hypotenuse, again, because this is the unit circle, like multiplication is easy. And so both of these coordinate pairs are the same, and they're the square root of 2 over 2. Okay, and lastly, to finish off the first quadrant, if we do the same trick now with the point at the 60 degree angle, 
we are going to create a, another 30, 60, 90 right triangle, but this time the angle here in standard position is going to be the 60 degree angle. The hypotenuse is still 1. We've actually already calculated the legs, the length of the legs in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle with the hypotenuse of 1. Only now the legs are reversed. In other words, the x coordinate is the short leg and the y coordinate is the longer leg. So there's no sense in recalculating, we just need to switch the coordinates and so the x or the shorter coordinate at the 60 degree point is one half and the y, the longer coordinate, the longer leg is the y coordinate which is root 3 over 2. And using the power of symmetry these, knowing these three coordinate pairs in the first quadrant get us all the rest of the coordinate pairs around the unit circle. Here's what I mean. If we look at the symmetry from the first coordinate, first quadrant, into the second quadrant, then the coordinates at the point 120 degrees have the exact same y coordinate. as the coordinate pair at 60 degrees. You can see the height of the y coordinates are the exact same. So they have the exact same height, same y coordinate, but what's different about their x coordinates is now we're into the second quadrant which makes all x coordinates negative. And we know it's negative one half because of symmetry, so we've got the x and y coordinates for 120. We're going to do the exact same thing for 135 degrees, or 3 pi over 4, we're going to take the 45 degree point and use symmetry. Exact same y coordinate, root 2 over 2, and the opposite x coordinate, negative root 2 over 2. Following the same pattern for 150 degrees, we'll take the coordinate pairs at 30 degrees, exact same y coordinate, opposite x coordinate. Okay, following that pattern around the circle, once we get into the third coordinate down here, the, the, the point at 150 degrees is going to, we're going to use symmetry to get the coordinate pair at 210 degrees. That's going to be the exact same x coordinate, which is negative. And now we're below the x axis, so it's going to be the opposite of the y coordinate. At 225, it's going to be the exact same x-coordinate at 135 degrees, but now the opposite of the y-coordinate. And at 240 degrees, we're going to have the exact same x-coordinate as 120 degrees, but now the opposite y-coordinate. And finally, in the fourth quadrant, we're now back to the positive x-coordinates, but we still have the negative y-coordinates. At 315, we're back to a positive, positive x-coordinate, negative y-coordinate, and lastly, 330 degrees, positive x, negative y. And you can see that symmetry here as well if we go in the reverse direction. And now you have all the coordinate pairs, you have all the angle measurements, and you have the unit circle completely filled in. And finally, by far the most important reason to have the unit circle completely filled in is because those coordinates hold the key to knowing the trig function values of angles around the origin and standard position. And so the, the um, cosine of an any angle in standard position on the unit circle is simply the x-coordinate. The sine of an angle in standard position on, or around the unit circle is its y-coordinate. The tangent of theta is the y-coordinate 
divided by the x-coordinate. You can see this in the triangles we drew as using SOHCAHTOA because the hypotenuse of the unit circle is always 1. We get these trig ratios around the unit circle. Well, if these trig ratios look like this, then we can say that the secant of an angle in standard position around the unit circle is the reciprocal of x. We can say that the cosecant is the reciprocal of y. And lastly, the cotangent is x over y. And that is how we will find the six trig function values of any unit circle angle.